before Rocky came along, I'd never seen a boxing match. I think it's sort of a dopey thing to do. Second or third page, the guy's talking to his turtles, Cuff and Link, and I was charmed. And I was charmed. Sylvester and I hit it off. I loved his script. Sylvester Stallone gave me his guts and his heart and his best shot. Thank you. Thank you. He was a starving actor at the time, and there's nothing better. A starving actor. A starving actor. They show up on time. They don't care about how big their trailer is. They're very appreciative. They will do whatever you say. You, and there's nothing better. Sylvester and I had no idea this thing was going to uh, be the hit that it was. I figured it was going to be in the bottom half of a double bill in Arkansas. The movie was made for uh, less than a million bucks. Uh, 28 days. 29 days. He exaggerates. It was 28. I think it was 27 days for uh, 950,000. I seem to remember it was about 28 days. And I think he told me that he rewrote about 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300 pages. We were constantly uh, uh, like the the first date scene. Aren't you skating? No, I ain't skating since I was 15. You know, that's when I started fighting. I was 15. Skate's got bad for the ankles, you know. For instance, uh, on Rocky and Adrian's first date, they were supposed to go to a, a, a restaurant and have about four or five pages, six or seven, seven or nine pages. I said, you don't want people sitting at a table talking for six or eight pages. Maybe they go bowling. 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 So uh, we decided that they were going to go ice skating. So we went to uh, Philadelphia to shoot the exteriors of the movie. And we had three or four days there to, where we had to shoot all the exteriors. It was a very low-budget movie. And we couldn't afford to go to Philadelphia with a full union crew. So we went with a non-union crew. And, uh, and we were going to shoot the ice skating sequence uh, there. But after just a few days in, in Philadelphia, the producers started getting cold feet. And they said, you know, if the union ever finds out that we're here, we're going to be, we, we got to go back to L.A. and forget about the ice skating because we can't afford the uh, extras. So we'll just put it in the dining room. We'll put it in the cafe. I said, no, you don't want to do it in a restaurant. Maybe the place is closed. What if the place is closed? I think it's closed. No, I think maybe we're just early or something like that, you know? You! You! We're closed! I think the scene is much more romantic and unique and has a lot more charm than if there are a bunch of people bumping into each other in the background. I tell you, things get pretty rough in the ring. When we were going to shoot the scene with uh, uh, Thayer David, who's the uh, promoter, where he says, um, you know, how would you like to fight Apollo Creed? The original script, he said, oh yeah, I'd like to do that. I'll give you a good fight. And on the way to work that uh, day, I'm thinking about that scene, and I'm thinking, Rocky's not educated, but he's not dumb. And he would realize that he has no business fighting this guy. So he would say, no. no. Now, the promoter's got to con him into it. You believe in America, don't you? You believe that America is the land of opportunity? Yeah. And now we feel that much more for Rocky because he's being taken advantage of. And poor Rocky gets uh, uh, conned into doing this thing. And we feel for him that much more. Once I got the job, I started looking at uh, boxing movies. And I was amazed at how phony the boxing looked. And I realized that, you know, if we were going to uh, make this uh, different, that the boxing should look real. So the first time that Carl Weathers and Sylvester get into the uh, ring to start uh, practicing the boxing, uh, they say, oh, I'm going to swing, and the other guy says, I'll do this. And I realized we were going to be there forever. And I said, fellas, uh, this is never going to work. Sylvester, why don't you go home and write, write this thing out? He makes a left, you do a right. Lefts and rights and falling down. Write it out and bring it back and we'll learn that. And we'll learn it like a ballet. 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 It will be choreographed. And we'll do the same thing day after day after day. And we did it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Every day I shot with my little eight millimeter uh, camera and show them the, uh, the stuff. They realize how terrible it looked. It's gotta get better than that, guys. And how they ought to lose some weight. And it worked. And I also showed the footage to uh, Bill Connie in a, a little 8mm projector that I could slow down and, 
and I'd show him that and play some Beethoven's uh, sixth uh, behind, behind it, and it moved the whole thing up because you know you put Beethoven behind leader, and the leader looks good. And he liked that idea, and that's what we did. script originally it uh, had Rocky going to Mickey's gym the night before the big fight to watch some uh, newsreel footage of uh, Apollo Creed uh, and look at all his fights and after looking at all the footage he realizes that he has no chance against this guy but if he can just go the distance then he won't be another bum from the neighborhood which was the whole gist of the picture. Well, we never had the time or the money to shoot this uh, newsreel uh, footage. And I also knew that we were never going to have the, the extras to fill up this huge uh, sports arena. So I suggested that instead of him going to see uh, the newsreel footage, that he go to the uh, sports arena where we were going to uh, shoot this thing. And the lights are on, and when we're there for the fight and the lights are off, we'll imagine that all those uh, seats are filled with people. Then when we do the fight, and we don't show all the crowds, nobody will miss it because they've already seen how big it is. We had tried to get the producers to spring for the uh, painting of those big posters the, that were hanging at either uh, end of the arena of the guys in their poses. The artist had used a Polaroid for the one of, of uh, Rocky in his pose, and he had the wrong color trunks on it. Mr. Jurgis, the poster's wrong. What do you mean? Well, I'm wearing white pants with a red stripe. Well, there's no time to redo it or, uh, so I said, well, maybe the, uh, maybe the promoter shows up and, um, and Rocky says, hey, those are the wrong colors. And he'll say, forget it. Don't worry about it. It doesn't really matter, does it? I'm sure you're going to give us a great show. And we'll feel even more for Rocky now because nobody cares about the guy. So he becomes that much more sympathetic, uh, uh, to the viewer. The music budget was $25,000. All in for everything, including his fee, including... The copying, the studio, the musicians, the tape, the rentals. Everything in for 25 grand. So when the producers walk in and we had a one three-hour session with about a 32-piece uh, orchestra, they looked at Bill and said, how are you ever going to make any money? Because all the money went... Uh, to the music. That's why it sounded uh, the way it did. Well, originally, um, the last scene, uh, after he loses uh, the fight, the uh, crowd carries Apollo Creed out and, and they carry uh, Rocky on in their shoulders. And As he's being carried out, uh, he sees Adrian, he reaches down, pulls Adrian up on uh, their shoulders and the two of them go out. When we came to uh, shoot this, the extras uh, carried out Apollo and the AD said, well, we haven't got anybody to carry out Rocky. Well, obviously the same people who carried the first guy out are going to carry uh, Rocky out. Well, Sylvester heard this and he said, wait a second, maybe Rocky doesn't get carried. He didn't win the fight. Maybe nobody pays any attention to him. Maybe he just walks down the uh, aisle and he sees Adrian and they walk uh, off together hand in hand. So I thought, that sounded very poetic. Let's do that. Well, I'm putting the picture together. And Bill County comes in with the last cue. Well, it was... I'm knocked out. I said, this is, this is incredible, but I don't have any footage to go with this. Uh, why don't we uh, keep Rocky in the, in the ring? Uh, he starts bellowing like a wounded bull elephant. And then they get there and clinch. He says, I love you, we're out. The producers didn't want to hear about this because we've already shot the thing. So I, I, I took just some footage that we had and, and cut it together against the music. I said, now just imagine if, 
instead of her just standing there looking, she's battling through the people uh, to get there with that music behind her. Right? So they finally go, oh, all right, well, you only have half a day. Uh, so we go back to the place with about 20 extras to walk in front of the camera, look like, you know, keep the crowd uh, thing going. Marty Scorsese is about to do um, New York, New York. Uh, for them, so we uh, we borrowed th that uh, his camera equipment and uh, went uh, back to the sports arena with about 20 people to walk in front of the camera, make it look like a uh, crowd, and we shot that uh, ending. And the ending was inspired by Bill Conti's uh, music. And without that ending, and without Bill Conti's music, I don't think uh, I'd be sitting here. What kind of uh, director are you? How are you? Unemployed. Employed.